gonna go ahead and record this. So you might want to mute yourselves or, you know, if the feedback's too much, I'll have to uh, mute y'all. Um, so I like statistics myself, personally. That's what got me in math. When I was uh, eight, seven, I used to have a baseball card collection and I'd look at the back of the baseball cards and get excited about the numbers. So when we organize data, there's a lot of ways we can do that. Sometimes we have raw numbers. Sometimes we have a display of the numbers. And that's what we have here. And so we have categories that we're using, which are the bars. And down at the bottom of the bars would be the intervals represented by each bar. Now, in this case, we're not given the intervals. What we're given is the midpoint of the bars. And if you know this, that there's a difference of two as you go left and right. Okay, so we're gonna look at how we should interpret this given the display of data is very uh, basic. We don't know what the raw numbers are. Okay, now you might be able to see the video, right? I constructed this on the uh, whiteboard so we could look at this a little more. So what do you do here? Well, it depends upon what kind of data this is, right? Is it discrete data? That means we can count it. Is it based upon integers, countable sets of numbers, right? Mm, this is weight. Weight is measurable, right? So that means this is continuous because we can have all real numbers to represent a weight, right? Whereas if we're talking about number of cars, that has to be based upon integers. You can't have 2.25678 cars, but you can have a weight of 136.974123333367. This is continuous, all right? Now, as far as the intervals, well, since they're going by twos, that would be 131 and that would be 133. Right, and the same thing here, since we're going by twos, then this would be 135. And the same thing here, that would be 137, 139, 141, 143, 145, 147, and then we have to end at 149. Okay, so the intervals, the upper edge, the right side of the bar is gonna be in the midpoint of 146 and 148, whereas the lower end of the bar would also the same thing, be the midpoint between 144 and 146. So you can think of it that way too. So how do we interpret this? Well, if this is discrete, then this bar represents the numbers 131, 132, 133. If this is continuous, then this bar represents all the numbers starting at 131 all the way, but not including 133. So this would be where we would have made a interval of 131, and then this would have been 132.9. Uh, and then the next one would have started at 133, and this would have gone all the way to 134.9. So if it's continuous, then the bars are including the numbers less than the number on the right, except when you get down here to the end. Because in the end here, we end at 149, and this interval would have been between 147 and 149. So this last bar actually includes 149. Right, so you might remember when we did that, that interval would have been 147 to 149, right? Because this would have been the last number when we create our frequency table. Little subtle things, very subtle, easy to overlook these things, right? So that's why I wanted to kind of point that out. We don't really need to know that to do the warm up, but it's important to know what we're looking at here and the little subtle interpretations of the intervals. All right, so we want to get the mean. Did anybody get the mean? All right, well, we're going to at least have to find out how many numbers there are. So if you add the frequencies, which I put in red on top to make it easier to see, the height of the bars, right? So if you add all these numbers, 
you'll get 30 numbers. Okay, and then you just multiply, and I'm gonna go ahead and erase these blues so that it doesn't clutter up. And now you just multiply the midpoints to the frequency and add. So this would be two times 132, the next bar plus two times 134, the next bar plus three times 136, plus the same thing, each bar. And then at the end here, the last one would be based upon 148. And there was one of them, so plus one times 148, add all that, divide by 30. All right, and so the mean, which I'm gonna use this letter, the mean, this little funny M, that's called mu, M-U. And that's the official symbol for mean, all right? It's got the left side vertical, and then the little hump in the middle, and then a little curve on the right side. It's called mu, all right? And, and what you should have gotten, at least what I got, was 139.5, Three, three. A little awkward to write when you got to lean over. Ah, and my back is killing me. Ah. So anyway, that's the mean. Now again, I just put plus because it's the same pattern. There's no way I'm going to be able to write that on a board. All right, everybody okay with that? All right, I'm sure the mode was not challenging, but just in case. So the mode would be the bar that has a frequency of eight, the most frequent interval. And so that would be 140. So the numbers from 139, less than 141, okay? Well, if we want the median, we wanna do our n plus one divided by two. So if we wanna get the median, we wanna find the position of the middle. So 30 plus one, divided by two, we get 15.5. So that means in between the 15th and the 16th number. All right, well, let's go ahead and count. So we're gonna go less than the upper number of the bar, less than the upper number of the bar, less than the upper number of the bar. Remember, that means we're gonna add these frequencies. Okay, so less than 133, there was two. Less than 135, there was two plus two. So the fourth number would have been in this bar, and we're looking for the 15th and 16th number. Okay, so then less than 137 would be the three plus two plus two. Again, notice you can just add to the previous number. Okay, then this would be less than 139, so we add the six. So the 13th number would be in this bar. Okay, and then less than or equal to, no, sorry, no, not equal to, less than 141, we add the eight. Okay, so the 21st number would have been this bar. So in this bar, we're going from the 14th to the 21st number, right? Because after the 13th number would be the next bar, the 14th number. So in this bar would be the median because between 14 and 21 it is 15 and 16. All right, so the median would be the midpoint of that bar. So the median equals 140. Okay, well notice that the mean is just a tad less, ever so slightly, not really that much. You know, this is a rounding error. So those are practically the same, but just a little bit less. So a little bit to the left. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of that just because it might be convenient if somebody asks me or whatever. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll also do that because I wanna be consistent. So it's hard to completely repeat the exact same thing I share with y'all. All right, so we're gonna look at some types of bar graphs, right? And so if you look at this, Here's the mode, and there's bars to the left of the mode, and there's bars to the right to the mode. 
So it looks like there's a little bit more to the left just by looking at that without being mathematical. Okay, these are the six type of bar graphs. When you have an equal amount of frequency in each interval, that's called uniform. And so this would be everyone is equally likely to be within any one of those seven intervals since they occur with equal frequency. So that's called uniform, the same, the same height. Just like when you wear a uniform, everyone wears the same clothes, like when you go to Catholic school. Now we've already looked at this one. I think we had a warm up where I pointed out what this is called. So we call this normal or central or symmetric. Now the reason we call this normal as opposed to abnormal, all right? That's a human characteristic. This is just talking about data. When we look at groups that have similar characteristics, we tend to get data bar graphs that look like this. So if you're looking at, say, major league baseball players or professional basketball players or professional football players, they get to that level because they're really good. They've already dominated high school, little league, college. And so they're so good that um, owners are willing to pay them millions of dollars. And so when you get statistics from professional sports, they tend to look like this because the population of players are just really, really good. So they're going to have very similar characteristics, right? Even if you have someone who hits 200, 10 in the major leagues well that's just the major leagues they probably hit like 350 when they were in high school right so if you gathered people with similar characteristics and you measured their heights or their shoe sizes you would get this kind of distribution so that's why it's called normal right and right skew notice there's more bars to the right left skew notice there's more bars to the left so you base that on the mode so which side of the mode has more? That's what you base skew on. And this means that the mean is shifting to the right. The mean is being pulled to the right. Whereas here with the left skew, you have the highest bar, the mode, and there's more to the left. And that means the mean is shifting to the left. Heavy skew is when you have the mode and there's nothing on one side and all the bars are on the other side. So this would be called heavy right skew. Okay, you get this kind of distribution when you got most people in one group and a very few people outside of that group. So notice that here at the extreme, there's very few. Most people are in these first two. And so you have this in populations in which talent can distinguish you from everyone else in the population, right? So when you talk about people who are actors, all right, most actors are never gonna make it big. They may be good, but they're never gonna get the headlines, they're never gonna get the, the, the movie contracts, they're, they're just not. They're gonna have to spend their time doing commercials, hopefully they can get paid for their theater work, maybe they might be lucky after 25 years, they get suddenly recognized, like some actors have, um, George Clooney being one, he really only got recognized when he was like 49 or 50. So. Heavy skew, a lot of actors never make it big, but there are very few who do. Major league sports, right? Um, certain players have a skill set that's different than every other player in the population. So like base stealing. Most people in baseball aren't gonna steal a lot of bases, but there are a few who do. Heavy skew. Okay, so that's, that's how, why you get that. And multimodal is when you have different populations in the same group that you're analyzing. So when you have different populations in the same group, they have different characteristics, right? So you might have people who excel at math, they do well in it, there's a group, and so the mode is up. And then you have 
some people who have trouble with math. It doesn't come easy for them. They struggle. So these two groups are different. They're not the same. So each group has its own mode. And so we call that multimodal, more than one mode. Sometimes you can have four or five different modes, especially in um, finance, right? You might have some low-end cap stocks and then some mid-range cap stops and some upper-range cap stocks. And so that's um, when you might have more than two or three or four modes. Okay, so if we look at this, Let's count how many are on the left. So if we just look at the frequency to the left of the mode. All right, so to the left. Well, we just add the six, the three, the two, the two. So that'd be 13. So that's 13 to the left. All right, I'm gonna erase this. Well, what about the right? Well, on the right, on the right of the eight, we got the three, the three, the two, the one. All right, so six plus two plus nine. So there's nine to the right. So instead of basing it on visual, you know, you just look at it and you think it's right or left. This is how you can be more mathematical. Count the frequencies to the left of the mode, the eight. Count the frequencies to the right of the mode, the eight. There's more on the left, so this is left skew. So the mean is shifting to the left. And I erased it, but you might remember that before I erased it, the mean was 39.5 and the median was 40. So just ever so slightly did the mean shift to the left, right? Still, oh, one, sorry, forgot to put the one. Okay. So what kind of skew you guys think this is? Is this right or left skew? Okay, so I got three different answers. Let me give other people a chance. All right, so the mode here is at 20. The mode here is at 20. Okay, a couple more seconds. It is left skew. It's not normal, okay? so. Here's eight, the bar for eight, 20. So now I'm gonna count to the left of the 20. You got the 15 plus the nine, which is 24, plus 11, which is 35, plus about seven, which is 42, plus five, 47, plus two, so 49, 49 to the left. I think you can probably see that the left has got a lot more than it's on the right. 49 on the left. Okay, well, this is probably about 13. These two are probably about seven. So 13 plus 14, 27 plus four, 31. 31 on the right, 49 on the left, left skew. Okay. All right. Now, today we're going to look at something called quartiles, which is just like median, but it's grouping the data into four groups instead of two groups. Now you can use this formula, but there's a little quirk with it. And I'm going to point out to that to you when I explain the big picture of how are we going to take our data, break it up into four groups. When we do that, we call that quartiles the numbers that help us break the data up into four groups. Okay, now this little method of getting the upper and lower quartile works except when you get 0.75. And I'm gonna point out why, but if you do this and you get 0.75, just add 0.25. There's a mathematical reason why it's one of the quirks of numbers, it's because you're adding the one here. Uh, to, to do this, all right? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and while you guys are looking at that. So we're gonna look at if we had eight numbers, if we had nine numbers, 
if we had 10 numbers, and if we had 11 numbers, Now, if we're gonna do this, we don't have to be mathematical. We could just, just do this visually. So for the eight numbers, the median would be in between the four and the five. And notice you got four numbers below, four numbers above. For the nine numbers, the median would be five. And notice you got four numbers below, four numbers above. 10 numbers, the median would be between the five and the six. Notice you got five below, five above. And for 11 numbers, notice that it would have to be the median six, five numbers above, five numbers below. The quartiles, the upper and lower quartile, are the middle of the lower half, that's the lower quartile, the middle of the upper half, that's the upper quartile. Okay, so in between the two and three is the lower quartile, in between the six and seven is the upper quartile. And notice when you do that, you got two numbers in each group. Okay, now when you get to the nine numbers, the median was five, so we got four numbers below in between the two and three again, and we got four numbers above in between the seven and eight again. Okay, notice you still got four numbers in each group, but this time you're not including the median. The median is kind of marking off the groups here. All right, whereas 10 numbers, you got five numbers below, five numbers above, so three, is the middle number of the five numbers below, and eight is the middle number of the five numbers above. And again, notice you got two numbers within each of these groups. And in this case, the upper quartile eight, the lower quartile three is marking off the groups. And then when you got 11 numbers, you still got five numbers below and five numbers above. So the middle of the five numbers three, the middle of the five numbers nine. Okay, and notice this time, the median, the upper, and the lower quartile are marking off the groups. All right. Well, if you did the n plus 1 divided by 4, let's see what that would do for us. So if we did that up here, right, so if we had eight numbers, we would have 8 plus 1 divided by 4, which is 2.25. So notice from the bottom in between the second and third number, from the top in between the second and third number. Okay, whereas with nine, if we did that when n equals nine, this would be n plus one divided by four, which is 2.5. Okay, so notice again, this in between the second and third number from the bottom, in between the second and third number from the top. Okay, and then if we did this for the 10 numbers, we would do the 10 plus one divided by four, which is 2.75. Remember I pointed that out about the 2.75? That's the third number. That's not in between the second and the third number. Mm -hmm. All right, the same thing here. As you count down from the top, that's the third number. That's not in between the second and the third number. All right, and the reason why that is, is because when you divide by four, that's really dividing by two twice, right? So if you take half of these five numbers, you're always gonna have a decimal. And so that kind of, that's what that means. So if you get a 0.75, just add 0.25, and you'll get the third number, okay? And then just to finish up this, idea. So if we had the bottom one, we have our 11 numbers. So 11 plus 1 divided by 4 is exactly 3. Again, that's because 12 is a multiple of 4. And so the third number from the bottom, the third number from the top. Okay, it's helpful to kind of see that, I think, um, and not make this too mathematical, but that's how you can use this. So just count down from the bottom, count from the top, in between the second and third number, in between the second and third number. When you get a 0 0.75, add 0 0.25. Okay, so the third number from the bottom, the third number from the top. Okay?
Again, little subtle things here. I know you guys are, can divide by two and divide by four, but. Okay, so I'm not gonna do one. Um, well, actually I am gonna do one, my bad. So um, the next thing we wanna do here is call the box and whiskers. And that's where we kind of use a number line and mark off the smallest value, the largest value, and then the upper, lower quartiles and the medians. All right. So if you guys think you can do this, you can go ahead and get started on number two. Okay. Go ahead and get started if you think you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and write the numbers for number one, go through that example, and then explain how you make a box and whiskers plot. Okay. Let's see, two, three, four. So again, if you think you can do this, go ahead and try number uh, two. And then in the future, I'll tell you what you should have gotten for your answers for number two. All right. So let's see, 13, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 20. All right, I'll wait another minute. Ooh, get a little stuffy in here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, do an example. So for number one, I'm gonna do an example. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you what this box and whiskers plot is. And then I'll come back to this screen in case some of y'all wanna try number two or finish number two, and then I'll tell you what you should have got for number two. All right, so here's the numbers for number one. So first we gotta count how many numbers there are. So there was 22 numbers for number one. Now we already know the minimum value was two and the maximum value was 38. So we need three more numbers. Okay, so we got the lower quartile, the uh, uh, median and the upper quartile. All right, so to get the median, we can do the n plus one divided by two. So 22 plus one divided by two, which is 11.5. So in between the 12th and the 13th number. Okay, then to get the quartiles, we can do the n plus one divided by four. So 22 plus one divided by four. All right, let me make sure I didn't do anything stupid. Yeah, okay, just making sure. So then we get 5.75. Ooh, look at that, it's a 0.75. So that means we're gonna have to add 0.25, so six. So the sixth number from the top, the sixth number from the bottom. There's another way we can think about that. We got 22 numbers, right? So that means we're gonna need to split that up into 11 above and 11 below, since 22 is even. Now we got 11 numbers below and 11 numbers below, which is an odd number. So we're gonna have to split this with a one in the middle. Notice that's the sixth number. So you could think of this this way too, if you, this is more intuitive to you. That's, what, that's actually what I do. Um, this is helpful though, if you know that. Okay, so the sixth number from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it just happens to be the number six, right? Because these could have been three digit numbers, two digit numbers, no? okay? And now the sixth number from the top, one, two, three, four. Don't count here, you've got to count in order. Five, six, so 28. Okay, so the upper quartile is 28, the lower quartile is six, the minimum, the lower extreme is two, the maximum, the upper extreme is 38. 
right now we got to get the median. So we know we're in between the, uh, did I say 12th? I'm stupid. 11th and 12th number. I wonder why I did that. I'm stupid. So 11.5 in between the 11th and 12th number. All right. So we know this is the sixth. So seven, eight, nine. So 12 is the ninth number. 10, 11, 12. So in between the two 15s. Now notice if you counted from the top, you would still get the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. That's the sixth number. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you can count from the top or the bottom. Okay, so the median is 15, because in between the two 15s. You could go 15 plus 15 divided by two if you needed to. Okay, now what we call a box and whiskers plot is by putting these five numbers above a number line. So we got five numbers here. The minimum value, the lower extreme, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum, the upper extreme. Now when you do this, you have to have a scaled number line. You can't just put any old numbers on the bottom. You have to do this in this kind of scale. So we've got to go from two to 38. So I'm just gonna go ahead, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and then I just make one more to make 40. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Okay, now you have to have a scaled number line. Now maybe you, you use a different scale, that's fine. Maybe you want to go by fives, that's fine. Maybe threes, fours. Okay, I went by twos. So the minimum data value, I'm gonna put a dot above two. The maximum data value, I'm gonna put a dot above 38. The upper, the lower quartile, I'm gonna put a line, draw a horizontal line up from the six. The upper quartile, 28, I'm gonna draw another line up from the 28. The median 15, I'm gonna draw a line where the median is. Connect the upper and lower quartile lines, that's our box. Connect the dots, that's our whisker. This is called a box and whiskers. And this is the minimum value, that's the lower quartile, LQ. This is the median, MED. This is the upper quartile, UQ. And this is the maximum data value. Now the reason we do this is because the spacing of these bars is very helpful. It can help us see skew and the width of the whiskers helps us see if there's an extreme data value. And so you can look at this. Notice the left whisker is much smaller than the right whisker. So we got 25% of the data values in this little small range. We also have 25% of the data values in this larger upper range. And then between the lower quartile and the median, we also have 25% of the data values. And in between the median and the upper quartile, we also have 25% of the data values. And notice the upper box is a little bit bigger than the lower box. So that gives us a sense of the spread, how the data spreads out. Okay, and these are called quartiles. We've got four regions. Okay, anybody wanna ask any questions about that? All right. If anyone wants to do the number two problem, I'll go ahead and write on the board what you should have gotten. So,
All right, so again, I'm just waiting a moment in case anybody wants to do number two. I'll point out what the solutions are in, in a moment. So your homework tonight is just um, something I got out the textbook. Um, I just took a um, picture of it. Um, so that way it's easier for y'all. You can just grab it, excuse me, from the Google Classroom. Meeting number two, Elisa, you're correct. All right, anybody else got anything? I'll wait another minute and then I'll show you what you should have gotten. Okay, so this is what you should have gotten. The minimum value was three, the lower quartile was 11, the median is 23.5, the upper quartile 32.5, and the maximum value was 40. Okay, does anybody need anything? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. So um, you guys take it easy. You guys take